welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is optimization of mass distribution for harmonically excited structures in RFM6. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the content of the website, the German and English webinars, customer projects, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will answer your questions together with Frank. Uh, Andreas Niemeyer will do the presentation, but my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Frank Faustich. I'm responsible for quality management and product development in the company. And today I will try to answer your questions. Hi, I'm Andreas Niemeyer. I'm working for Lubar since uh, I think 16 years and responsible for the product engineering. Um, I'm taking care about features and program concept, how we perform the features in the program, and then we do it with our programming staff. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. I see something about how you can ask questions, at least for the attendees who participate the first time. On the right side of your screen, you can see the control panel. You can show that with that arrow here, and then you can enter a question here. Yeah, and then we will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. You can also watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at dubai.com. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Andreas Niemeyer. Andreas, it's your turn. Thank you, Andreas. <laughs> okay. Then I take over with uh, the topic optimization of mass distribution for harmonically excited structures. In fact, a complex title, I would say. Um, I expected uh, a specific target to explain you something with this example, especially it takes care about our add-on optimization where you can find with a self-learning process parameters what fits for your system and gives you good results. For this, I created this example, of course, with connection to dynamic load, but you will see how you can use it in optimization process. To explain you this uh, demonstration today, I created five main points what we do one after the next. And the first, of course, is the description of the structural task. You see on my right side here a few slides or let's say plots what we will do in the next hour. Um, it's a simple beam where we investigate oscillations and then we calculate forces over time. How we can do this in our program RFM, I will show you in point two and three, we create together this model, make a manual check, then we prepare it for a manual optimization. And later we use this self-learning process, this optimization add-on to find good parameters. And finally, we give a summary about everything and the outlook what is coming as next. So, now let's go to the first point, description of structural task. A simple slide here, you see we take care or we, we want to model a simple beam with a load in the middle. I, I, I sketched up a, a, a washing machine that you have something for imagination. Uh, I want to symbolize here that we want to simulate a rotating machine with a specific frequency and a specific eccentric load. And I expect from this, let's say, rotating machine on this simple beam that this beam will oscillate. Let's say it goes down, it goes up, in, and it finally also vibrate over time. And for this task, we have to check if this beam, let's say with a discrete cross section and from a discrete material can uh, overcome these loads. 
and is stable and works. And later, if not, and this example will give us a sign that it's not okay, what we can do to optimize the structure and to decrease this deflection, what I symbolize with this red arrow. And my idea, and or let's say what I want to show you is, of course, we can change cross section, support, loads, but but I I want to try to to place additional load on the member to let's say to decrease the deflection. What sounds in the first instance strange to bring up additional load to decrease the deflection, but you will see how it's connected. For this, I use this dynamic functions because here you can simulate such effects. Okay, now this is the point where we, we change to a live demo, where we jump into the program, where I can show you how this could be done. So I open RFM. I already prepared it. The program wants to know from me the, the file name. So let's give this child a name. Um, do you know 10, for example, we use a 3D model and later we have to specify the task because we, we want to simulate here in the next uh, a rotating machine over time in the program, we have to activate the so-called time history analysis with all following add-ons like modal analysis. Further, we have to, to, to check if the beam can carry the loads what we apply, we have to select a steel design. This is for my demo enough. Um, we check the steel design according Eurocode, basic Eurocode. Of course, we can select any standard uh, uh, US, British, Chinese, whatever, but I, I use this basic setting here. If we jump into the program with a confirmation of this dialog, it will open, uh, let's say, an empty RFM environment where we see our 3D space, navigator, table, and bottom and we can directly start modeling this structure. Let's say, of course, it's an easy structure. I, I, I would say we place this beam in this X, C or, or on this X direction. So I use a function new member. Let's use here a new section and I select for this beam an IPE. IPE360, for example. So this I meant with discrete cross section from this Euro standard with a steel S235. So this settings describes, let's say, the stiffness of the beam. And I pick it and I made it pretty easy for me. Uh, I select a, or I want to simulate a 10 meter long beam. So I only can pick the grid points on the bottom. In the next point, I, I, I have to define the boundary conditions. The first one, let's say the, the supporting conditions, we we doing over types for nodes. So let's say node one is supported in X, Y, C, and fix also the rotation about X, and the other two are free. The node on the right side, node two, is open in X, rotation is fixed, and the others are free. And the remaining settings we can delete. So now, if we take a look on the structure, what we just modeled, we see simple supported beam, and the program already specified a load case self-weight because it thinks it's used from civil engineers, but always have to work with self-weight. If we want to see, uh, display this self-weight, we can activate it here. And we could wonder why we don't see something because uh, that's because 
RFM thinks the self weight of the elements itself is, let's say, boring because it's always here. So it's deactivated in standard that uh, you, you can activate here in Display Navigator. And you see our 10 meter long beam have here, let's say, uh, a self weight load of 0 0.571 kilonewton per meter, what results in, in a weight of 571 kilograms. No? And additional to this weight of the beam, we have now the weight of the machine in the middle. How we can apply it? I would say we simulate it as nodal load. So I divide this beam into two parts, divide member, intermediate nodes. I use one div uh, division with one element and I get finally two beams with one node in the middle where I can apply the, the weight of the, let's say, machine. Um, I estimate from this washing machine, it have a, a weight of 100 kilogram. So I use one kilonewton into C direction. So let's select this node and we get additional this uh, force. And if we calculate now this load case, we will get, let's say, a deflection and a, um, a force in the beam, which corresponds to the, let's say, self weight what we specified. And you see, if I apply the weight of the beam plus the 100 kilogram in the middle, we get a deflection of 0 0.3 centimeters. Of course, besides this deflection, we get also here forces and also stresses, maybe the sigma stresses, what we can visualize with compression and tension on the bottom. But this is now minor. Um, when we want to know uh, is this deflection and force now okay for the beam or not, we have to do a design. Um, for this, we have to learn the program what he should check. Of course, the cross section is fine, but uh, if we want to check also lateral torsional buckling and such stuff, we, we, we have to define some stability information. So I take both beam elements and glue it together with a member set, create member set. And here I can define that we want to design the member set itself. So we see full length of both elements. And in this tab, we can now specify the stability settings. So we say, uh, please consider it in an effective length. So for me, it's a buckling check what I assign to the member. And here we give the full program. So check about buckling, about Y, C, torsional buckling, lateral torsional buckling, everything is activated. And we say, please, make a pin support on start and end. And I check this and now the program knows everything what is important for a ULS design. And for ULS design, the program needs finally, okay, which load should be designed. Um, you, you have to know if you start RFM, it always thinks like a civil engineer, it thinks you want to combine uh, loads according any standard. Um, of course, we can do this now, but this is not the focus of this demo. So I only want to have a characteristic utilization according to the load what I define. Therefore, I turn off all this stuff. Define this load case should be checked with self weight according ULS state. The SLS states we deactivate because they are not interesting in this uh, check and further we say okay please make a load combination according linear analysis and here the load case survey should be considered in reality in real life when we have to consider safety factors here would be for example 1.35 but here i select only the load case without safety because to compare, have comparable results for demo. Now, everything is done and we can run a steel design.
and you see the program is calculating first the let's say plot combination and then it feeds the steel design add-on and you see okay our steel design results in zero point or let's say in 12 percent utilization when we want to know what is the most worse we can here uh, open the table ratio by members and you see section proofs are all fine and the stability check is maybe the most crucial here of course only 12 percent you get here a hand calculation and see okay the uh, existing or the acting bending moment is um, smaller than the resistance so everything is fine um, for, when we speak about stability you will see also here a buckling curve or let's say yeah buckling curve and to make it more visible we can also render here the deformed cross section and you see this is the shape for the critical bending moment of the design check so now everything if you see this picture and this utilization I would say everything fine yeah design is made of course also when we add a safety but let's say a small but and so far I prepared this example what happens if we turn on the machine and simulate here an eccentric mass let's say it's a washing machine so I, I estimate 10 kilogram eccentric mass with eccentricity of 20 centimeters because the drum have a diameter of 40 and I simulate it with 800 rounds per minute so it's not the full speed of a washing machine then more the lower speed but let's see what happens if we do this and for this um, when we when we talk about rotations over time and excitation we we have to know that that structures have eigenfrequencies according its mass distribution and and first of all we should take a look on these eigenfrequencies to see is there a eigenfrequency here what is crucial for our load direction and therefore i i open the table load case and combinations go here into the second line i double click that i get the dialog for defining the data i write here as load case name modal uh, analysis and now this is a, a quite special setting because generally everybody thinks load case means something with static but you see you have here a box to select something you can also say no it's not a, a static analysis it's a modal analysis and if we talk about modal analysis we need new calculation settings something else than a static analysis setting and we open this setting and see um, yeah we can define here number of modes what we want to calculate just depends on degrees of freedom but generally i don't know which number i should write but often gives you an option you can select here automatic to reach an effective modal mass factor bigger than what you define here for example 90 percent to use this option you have to use the solver root of characteristic polynomial and further we do now some simplifications because as mentioned in begin we only want to describe the phenomena therefore i say okay please simulate this oscillation of this washing machine only in vertical direction and around y direction and this we confirm and we give the program the information that we should take for this modal analysis the masses from our load case one self weight with the 571 kilo of steel beam plus 100 kilo of the washing machine now let's run this analysis not load case and let's say in brackets analysis where we get now not bending moments and deflections and we get um, modal analysis let's say oscillations without dimension so the biggest amplitude is here one without a unit and we get here on the bottom a table to 
to this shape with a with a with the eigenvalue. So you see, we have here a bending shape with 10 hertz. We have a harmonic of this uh, with 47 hertz and with 90. So this is the oscillation. The program needs three eigenvalues to fulfill the 90% of mass what we specified. And this says me also what is really interesting, the most governing eigenfrequency moves this point where the washing machine is standing as most. Yeah? Therefore, it could be interesting. We see we have here a little bit more than 10 hertz. And when I speak about the washing machine with a rotation uh, of 800 rounds per minute, uh, and 800 rounds per minute is translated into hertz, 13 hertz. So we speak about 10 to 13, so it's in between these two frequencies. Um, we know, okay, it's close, but, but we cannot decide is it crucial or not. We have no idea. We only have an often, and often allows us to calculate these shapes. So let's go on and try to simulate this rotating machine. For this, I go again into the load case list, define a new load case, define a name, washing machine, define here analysis type. So we have now to do something over time, how it reacts over time, not static in one time point. So we select here time history analysis time diagram. We specify the calculation parameters. The calculation parameters, when we calculate something over time, we have here two options. We have, let's say, a, I call it always envelope method, a linear modal analysis, or a direct uh, uh, method. I use the simpler one, the, the easier one, linear modal analysis, where I give the program the command, please do the analysis, let's say, over four seconds. So please calculate results from zero to four seconds. Further, if we do such a calculation, we have to know it's it's a numerical system. If we if we have a vibration in, in the program, it, it never ends if we have no damping. So I, I give the program the information. There is a, a specific damping from your structure what makes the oscillation smaller over time. You can select here from a relay damping and a layer stamping. I use a layer stamping based on a on 0 0.1 as logarithmical damping decrement. And if I transform it into a layer stamping, it results in a number of 0 0.016. It's a typical model relevant data. It depends really if you created from steel or from timber, or concrete, and how your connection is made. So which energetic dissipating systems you have. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a model information what you feed here. And in the next point, the program wants to know, OK, what is my model shape for what I should do this analysis? And I select here, of course, please use the model analysis what we just made in low case two. And for me, is this was washing machine a, a life load, so I give him a red flag. Now, this was everything about properties of this load case, but still nobody said how quick or, or how fast the rotation is, how, how heavy. So all these things we have to still to define. Um, let's do at first the reaction over time. And you see, we the program wish to, to, to get a, a time diagram. In x-axis, we have the time, and in, in y-axis, we have a scalation factor. And the scalation factor or multiplication factor multiplies the load, what is in this load case three. So um, let's open it. And here we can define this time diagram by a table, of course. But I would say for a harmonic, uh, excitation or harmonic activation, it's boring to make it over table. So let's use here a function. 
And the function is pretty easy. So you can write here cosinus uh, bracket, maybe omega. So here's the circular frequency, maybe one multiplicated with the time. And if I close the bracket, you will see you get here this oscillation. As more you, you change this maybe uh, circular frequency to two, you see you can you can change the the art of, of, of oscillation and also activation. Um, in our case, we have to rate in this figure the, the circular frequency of the washing machine. It's, we know, 800 rounds per minute. Yeah? So let's write it here. It's, it's transformed uh, in this uh, circular frequency format if you write it P multiplicated with this frequency of no 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 let's do it different let's write omega no? then you see it directly omega and now if I confirm it the program don't know what should I do with this omega but we have here such a formula uh, control where we can write okay we have rounds um, it's a it's an integer value. So we can use it here, maybe model da, 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 uh, ratios, no integer, integer, and we have 800 rounds per minute. And now we can calculate the, a circular frequency. So I call it omega. And I give this omega is a, a unique group. Uh, let's use here a float value. Mm -hmm. And we write, this is not the value what I, I give, then I calculate it by a, form, by a formula. And I can write here, this is P multiplicated with rounds divided by 30. And if I do this formulation, I get the circular frequency here in this field. And if I confirm it, the program gets this fig omega, no, omega, this figure to it, and you see it changes. And if I say now, please calculate over four, or I need this diagram for four seconds, um, we have now the diagram for which we multiply the load over time. Now, this is fine. We have this function. We can also this function. We can also give you a name, maybe here washing machine and now we we have only to rule for which forces we want to use this diagram and this is now really easy let's say we say okay this this load what is inside the drum of the washing machine let's estimate 10 kilograms with this eccentricity of 20 uh, centimeters, we can calculate something like a centrifugal force in, in this direction where we want to exit the, this structure. So let's use here a nodal force, force in C, and we can use here now our, our parameters, what we already have. So we have 10 kilogram eccentric mass. Let's write the unit multiplied with 0 0.2 meter eccentricity and multiplied with omega with power two. Yeah? And if I define this, the program calculates me 14 kilonewton. This is the force what is now, let's say, according to the diagram, what we just defined going up and down according to the frequency what the 800 rounds per minute defines. Yeah? And now we can run a first analysis only for this load case and let's see what means this activation if we have an eccentric force in this machine um, by this frequency and you see it takes a little bit longer because we calculate it over time for these four seconds and now we get a deflection downwards and upwards so this is an envelope and we see we get a deflection of 2.3 centimeters so two centimeters more than the pure static effect yeah 
Of course, you can uh, define, see here the results over time, how the deflection increases and jump to from, from bottom to top, but, but this is, I would say, yeah, hard to understand. In this case, I recommend you to use the calculation diagrams, go here to diagram type, basic, time history analysis for load case three, and please check the UC value for the, let's say the node in the middle. So let's select it. And you see now how, how, how the deflection is changing over time for the four seconds. So in begin, we start small, then we get a, a big activation and then we have a leveled result here after a few seconds. And now, the only point what is now this is only the eccentric load but no self weight is considered so we have to envelope both and for this we we jump into the load case control go to load combination change this load combination from a static to a history type use the settings what we used before and in the assignment we have now the self weight plus washing machine so i can envelope both you see we have here a column for diagrams of course washing machine we defined but the self weight needs a diagram the question is which diagram have a self weight yeah um, in my case i would say it's constant but that it don't changes my system too much i say hey program please simulate the self weight slowly on the structure so Let's say increase it within the first second slowly to a level one, and then the first three seconds, please hold it on level one and go ahead constant. So we increase the surface slowly to the to 100%, and then we hold it constant. And now we have two loads the first is constant working the next is oscillating but starts one second later now we have this load case and for a design we give this load case into a result combination where we say please design this result combination with this enveloped results and now let's check what happens if we do a steel design with this rotating machine in the middle of the beam if it's still okay or not so this is the combination calculation of forces and deflections and this is the steel design and now it could come as expected in the middle we get a red flag we see we have a utilization of over utilization of 10 percent so maybe if somebody wonder what is crucial let's go to the checks and you see stability check is critical if we open details now the uh, acting force is bigger than the resistance and um, this means we get no okay for this beam also the static cpu static check was not was okay but the dynamic forces not if we want to see the diagrams what happens so let's make a new diagram type time history for this combination what we just did for you see, you see, we increase in the first second the self weight, and then we apply the dynamic effect, what is leveled here in, in later seconds. Yeah? But we have here some peaks, and this leads to a bad design. So now, what we can do? We can increase cross section. We can change supports we can reduce load we can place the washing machine here in this place several options of course i proposed in begin we can apply some additional loads of course uh, at the moment we're fighting with two big deflections so this 
combination gives us a, a, a deflection of 2.56 centimeters. So is it really a good idea to apply additional load? Could be or could not be, let's try it. For this, I divide these two beam parts into new uh, separate elements. So I divide it with four nodes and change in the load case sulfate here the loading and I apply maybe 50 kilos, so 0 0.5 kilonewtons on these nodes. Okay, and you see we we have now another surf weight and if we run design again with this new loading um, let's see what happens what is cool and what you should see also from this uh, uh, demo you can change everything afterward you only have to recalculate so if you hard coded in the program the design every everything is clear what to do so the design settings all is dynamic and adaptive to your settings what you give so it's really easy to change the nodal loads so now what happens our red flag is gone we have a utilization of 0 0.59 what is fine the deflection i think is also a little bit smaller let's check it it's now 1.4 so it it's working uh, if we apply in this case with this let's say resonant activation or almost resonant activation a little uh, uh, give it an, another mass distribution the system is going to be better so we we bring it out of tune of this resonant effect of course we cannot increase these additional loads extremely because then at any point the, surf, the, the standard deflection of, of statical effect is too big so there is a, a optimum of this mass distribution what don't bring additional lo, uh, deflection but but reduces the utilization and the question is now what is the best value is it 0 0.5 or let's say we don't know it and what happens now in reality this is exactly the point where you let's say i i make it a little bit easier here um, i hide this this is exactly the point where you try something and then you think okay let's increase it a little bit or decrease it a little bit so we can select all these 0 0.5 forces and change it for this, you can uh, uh, use, for example, also a, a, a manipulation factor. So we can also bring in here a factor M. Uh, say this is a, a force. Uh, I don't know. And let's write here 0 0.8 to try if we increase it a little bit. And now we say this, these forces are nodal loads edit have no figures and they connect it to a parameter is m and and it's it's easy to change it and to recalculate it now you can it's a try and error to find the smallest utilization with the best weight fit yeah and this is now the point why we all sitting now together for this job we added the optimization add-on and the optimization add-on is hidden here where i said in begin i activate it later you can activate it here and this is not a static calculation or any design or it's a really special add-on what allows you to do some special tasks and if you use this optimization add-on you get in this parameter list this parameter what we just defined new types you see you have here now three new types optimization and you can say now the optimization maybe the starting value let's start from a really small value should run from a, in an interval of 0 0.01 
to let's say 8.001 with an increment of 0, 0 0.2 what means finally we have 40 steps or 41 solutions and this is now a range where we change this value and if you activate this optimization you get below calculation optimization settings where you can now define please store the best 20 solutions so if the what is a solution it's a solution or mutation in our words it have nothing to do with x-men or <laughs> something like this and mutation is variant with 0 0.01 variant with 0 0.5, variant with 8.001. So see, 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 the model we see changed load. And now what what leads to a best solution? So you can find a, models with the min, minimum weight, with a minimum deflection, minimum cost, minimum CO2 emission. So we use minimum displacement. And here you have now, let's say, a robotic function for checking all 41 solutions according your interval of this parameter, what you defined. Yes, uh, is, is a cool function. What is doing for us is change automatically and finds us the best solution. But you have to, to, uh, to know such a calculation run takes around 23 seconds. If we multiply it with the factor of 41 mutations, it ends up in about around about 16 minutes. 16 minutes is okay to find a good solution and to save time and money, of course. But you also have to know if you have more parameters. For example, we say these loads could be different then it ends up in millions of mutations and then you can ask the question do i have to calculate all or only a fracture of it and a fracture of it is now hidden here with this option particle swarm and the particle swarm is now a, you see now the program asks you for a percent of mutations is now a method where I only calculate the fracture of it, for example, 50%. So I calculate 20 mutations and expect to get a good setting for this value M to fulfill my demand, a minimum displacement. How is this working? It's working because the program is starting with a random set of parameter M. And the second random set also. So the first two more or less random selected. Then according to the first two solutions where it realized, okay, um, with my first random selection of M, I get a displacement of five centimeters. In the second, I get a random selection only three centimeters. So I know if I change my value in this direction, it's going to be better. Yeah, so it learns from its previous experiences uh, to change the value in any direction. And this process is now made not only for one parameter, and you see it could be a table for more parameters. And now I don't want to calculate because I don't want to use your time for this. I prepared it. Um, if you um, I, I confirm, I, I can open here a model, um, here is this P start, um, here I did 50% of all possible mutations. The program found, let's say, a solution here uh, with 1.1 centimeter deflection and the utilization was 0 0.48. Yeah, so this was the smallest utilization we could found by using only 20 mutations. So the program found out, okay, during its calculation, you see how he worked. Um, and the best fit was if the parameter is 
uh, 1.4. So we have to add 1.4 kilonewton at every point, and then we get the smallest deflection with its connected utilization. If we watch this reaction over a diagram, so I, 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 I defined here a diagram, you will see if you calculate only 10%, so four or five, the program find a solution bigger than 1.4 centimeter by using maybe one minute. Yeah. If we calculate 20, you see the deflection is going down and by 40, 50, you see, we, we come to a minimum. So to this 1.1 centimeter by using six minutes roundabout, this is the orange line. And if you calculate all 100%, so this 41 solutions, you have to invest 60 minutes, but you don't get a better result. So this particular swarm optimization saves you time and gives you better results or structures where you can save material and whatever. So this is not a method what you can use for, for a really huge model. Then it's, it's made for finding a good structure or partial structure in, in a big building where you say, I don't know, should I increase the high or the width or both? And, and the program helps you to find a decision about by not using 100% and only by calculating a fracture of it. And this is maybe what I want to show you, what, what we made regarding a self-learning process inside the program. And this is only the start what we are doing. So we prepare our program with more such, let's say, artificial intelligence functions. Um, this is the add-on function, but additionally, maybe you see also here such a, a chatbot um, where you can ask questions and this questions is not only a stupid database, then it, it's, it knows our database and can create from this stuff what you write here inside maybe all manuals or FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions about all knowledge base articles, a good answer for you. So I can ask here a question, any format where I can define masses, can define masses in of uh, six. Then the program is, is thinking and using its data what is behind and giving you a feedback. And if it's possible, it gives you also a, a, a source um, where you find more data to this answer. Yeah, and we wish or let's say we think this function could help you really a lot saves your time to be quicker than in any other software and this is now maybe the end of my presentation and i give back to andreas okay andreas thank you for this nice presentation yeah i would like to show you where you can find the recording of the webinar and the model but before I do that, I would like to present you an offer. I hold back the screen. Okay, you should see my screen. If you want to yeah, get a free online product demonstration, yeah, just book a free online appointment. Contact our sales team with that link here, or you can scan the QR code. Or if you want to get a non-binding offer, then you can also contact our sales team. So now I show you our website and you at global.com and under news and events, you have to go left to the events and then you can find the webinars. Those are the webinars of the next week or, yeah, or next weeks. Most frequently asked questions, our regular webinar. I will present that with, uh, together with Jürgen Teilmann. Then, then in the week after next week, we present the API Python to Python. Then linear stability analysis and so on. I have to scroll down to the past webinars. Okay, that's already past webinar. 
yeah, at the end of the webinar. Okay, yeah, in the next days you will get an email with a direct link to that page here. The email will contain your attendee certificate. And on this page, you will find the recording in the middle here. You will find the, or you can already find the presentation slides of the webinar and the model to download. Yeah, that's the simple model with all entries that Andreas did in the webinar. Okay, that should be also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Andreas for the presentation. Thanks to Frank for the support by answering the questions. I hope we meet each other in a future webinar. Yeah, have a nice rest of the week and bye-bye.